So hey guys, today's video is going to be a little different in that I'm going to be talking about my Preaker OCs. Um, I don't have very many, I only have what, like 7 in this video, but 5 of them are from a fan series I created and 2 of them are just spur of the moment. So yes, I will show you guys my Preaker OCs. So yeah, my first fan series is Play Hard Pretty Cure, with the theme being video games. The first member of the group is Cure Jump, aka Ami Miyamoto, whose name obviously comes from Shigeru Miyamoto, creator of the original Super Mario Brothers. Um, and this is because each of the cures has a game genre as their theme, and Cure Jumps just so happens to be platformers. I wrote a little bio for them like months ago, and hers reads, 14 year old Ami has loved video games since childhood when her older brother introduced her to them. She dreams of being a developer, making more games with girls as the heroes. As Cure Jump, she can reach impressive heights and attack like a meteor with Jump Dreaming. So yeah, here's her attack, pretty good jump dreaming. So for her design, I decided to go for a super light pastel pink because I noticed a lot of official pink Preaker designs, they tend to go with the super saturated pink, which I'm not against at all. I love it, it's stylish and trendy, but for me, I just, you know, pastel pink is the best shade and they don't use it very much. I also wanted to keep her glasses in civilian form into her cure form um, to really emphasize the whole nerdy vibe, as well as giving some representation to us glasses wearers. I did receive some positive feedback for this actually. With her being based on platformers, um, she also has a lot of references to Mario in her design actually, such as her giant brown shoes, her white gloves, and her skirt features a platforming level design, um, kind of based on the Super Mario Brothers, but more of like a parody of Mario, like it would be like a candy adventure game or something like that. Plus the straps that attach her skirt are Mario's overalls inspired. As for her personality, she's pretty much a typical pinkier personality, very excited, but at the same time not as excited as for example like Miyuki from Smile Preaker. She's a little quieter, but not too like Subomi from Hard Catch Vibes. She's just kind of in the middle, but pretty much your typical pinkier. And as I mentioned earlier, her attack is Jump Dreaming, kind of similar to Nozomi slash Cure Dreams um, shooting star from Yes Preaker 5 Gogo, in which she launches into the enemies, but unlike Cure Dreams attack, instead of horizontal, it is vertical, so she jumps upwards and falls down like a meteor. And her catchphrase upon transforming is the code of love, Cure Jump. The second member to join the group is a purple cure, and her name is Mitsuki Hori, aka Cure Hero. Her last name comes from Yuji Hori, who is the creator of Dragon Quest, which is a JRPG I have not played yet, um, but yeah, second cure to join the group. Her bio reads, Tomboyish and cool Mitsuki enjoys playing guitar and piano music inspired by her favorite game genre, RPGs. Being a quiet only child, she enjoyed these single player adventures until Ami befriends her. As her hero, she's defensive and uses hero reflection to deflect attacks. So yes, her design is supposed to be that of an RPG protagonist. Um, she has kind of a pirate motive going on, along with a um, a knight, she has like the knight shoulder pads, except I forgot to draw them in in her attack photo. Very protagonist vibes. Her hairstyle in civilian form is a short bob cut and when transforming into a cure, it grows on one side only so it's asymmetrical. And after I finished drawing her, I actually thought it reminded me of Hero from Dragon Quest very very coincidentally. Not intentional though, but the default hero costume in Smash. I also forgot to mention that all the cures of the season have little square gems in their costumes, meant to resemble pixels in a video game. So in the story, Mitsuki is a grade above Ami and she's not necessarily like lonely, she's an introvert, she likes being alone, but you know she wouldn't mind the company, like after all she was an only child. I mean actually maybe that could be a plot point, maybe she was somewhat lonely, but she's not like that lonely. Anyways. Ami meets her somehow um, in school, maybe at the video games club, which will be important in the plot later. And then um, Ami's like, I have more games at my house want to come. And then, um, what's her name? Mitsuki's like, demo, I have to like do homework or whatever. And she's like, no, come on, come on. Like we have like, we have like Mario Kart Wii or whatever. Mitsuki's like, Chotomate, like Wii. And they just go and they play and they have fun. So yeah, that's how they become besties. And yeah. Her personality is very similar to Akira from Cure Hero Preaker. Um, she wears a lot of masculine presenting clothing. And honestly, the dynamic is very similar to Ichika and Akira, except Ami doesn't really have a crush on Mitsuki, or perhaps it could be implied. And lastly, her catchphrase is protected by the heavens, Cure Hero. And now onto our third cure of the season, and also the most plot heavy one. It is Shizu Matsumitsu, aka Cure Puzzle. Um, so basically her last name Matsumitsu comes from Nitani Masamitsu and he was the creator of Compile, was the original creator of Poyo Poyo. 
Anyways, her description reads, A shy maid with a low self-esteem hailing from the land of games, which yes, is the otherworldly location in the series. When the land is attacked, a portal is made for the princess, Kirpardi, to jump in and awaken new Preakers on Earth. Seeing her chance, Shizu jumped instead. Through the new Kiris, she learns to be honest and confident. So basically, if that didn't make any sense, um, the land of games is basically this place. It's like a video game world with like giant dice blocks and, you know, like cute animals and like. So basically, Cure Party intended to jump through the portal to recruit new Preakers on Earth. Um, supposedly, the people in her own kingdom were frozen into stone or something. So she couldn't, you know, like awaken any possible people on her own kingdom to become Preakers. So she had to go to Earth. <laughs> But she couldn't jump through the portal because she was being held by the strong grip of the villains, which I decided to draw randomly as these cat robots and this cat woman. And behind the curtains of this castle room is Shizu, the maid, and she's peeking and panicking. She's like, what should I do? Like, the princess slash cure party is captured. I don't know what to do. Should I just jump instead? She was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna do it because I've been in her shadow for too long. So she goes and goes into the portal. The cat lady is like, wait, what? No. And then um, Shizu was like, forgive me, princess. And she jumps in. <laughs> Cure Party blasts away the villains out of the castle and tries to rush, but the portal has disappeared. Um, so that's going to be a very important plot episode later. Um, but yes, um, Shizu, she jumps in. She's like, okay, like this is so cool, but at the same time, I feel so guilty. And um, through the cure, she obviously learns to like better herself and get more confidence. And yeah, I just wanted to make the green cure important because so far, the only green cure that was really plot heavy was um lala from cure what's it called from star twinkle Preaker. but physically she's more on the bluish side so i really this time wanted to have an important green girl who you know like was physically green you could look at her and say oh she's a green girl and she's important so yeah for me her personality would be very similar to cure rosetta aka alice from doki doki Preaker, being very like alice is, alice is not shy but she's very like regal and very like oh like very soft-spoken like, hello guys you know like that um and she's also kind of like um akko from sweet preaker cure muse where she's kind of like standoffish where she's like don't talk to me but like secretly i have like anxiety so like, talk to me please so like that kind where she's like lonely but she's like kind of like standoffish at the beginning so yes yeah, kind of a combination of the two as for her design, I really wanted to emphasize the puzzle theme. She has a puzzle headpiece, again, squares all around to symbolize the video games. And again, similar to Kurosetta, in civilian form, Shizu would kind of have like Lolita style dresses or very like dressy clothes, even for casual occasions. Her attack puzzle shower, I had fun designing. Basically, she snaps her fingers and there's a pop of puzzle pieces. They rain down and attack the enemy. Kind of similar to Custard Illusion from Cure Custard and Cure Cure Breaker all mode. And her catchphrase is mix and match, cure puzzle. And our fourth member to join the group is Noriko Nishikado, aka Cure Speed. Her last name comes from Tomohiro Nishikado, who was the creator of Speed Race in 1974. Her bio reads, the fourth member to join Play Hard Preaker is Noriko, confident she's always found in the games club getting first place in the racing titles. She wants to be a real race car driver, but is secretly afraid of trying something new. As Cure Speed, Speed Slash slices through enemy hordes. So basically, like, Noriko is really good at the racing titles. Um, very confident, like, she's already getting first in Mario Kart or whatever kind of parody that the anime would include. Um, she's very, like, confident. She wants to be a real race car driver, but is afraid of doing so because she's not athletic. Like, she, um, she likes playing the racing games, but she doesn't know anything about, like, physical racing. You know what I mean? Like, she wants to feel the rush of the, the wind, I guess. I also wanted to mention that she would be a cure who's focused on the least. Um, and I totally get why um, official Precure series tend to do this, where they have certain cures, such as in Star Twinkle Precure, we had Soleil or Selene, who get less screen time than Milky and Star, because when you already put so much focus on certain cures who are going to get the spotlight, such as they did with Milky, you kind of forget or like, I don't know, you kind of just don't make room for the other cures to get important plots. So something like that. I don't know. I just, if this was a real series, I can definitely picture Noriko getting the least amount of screen time. Not because I hate her, but just, I don't know. That's the way it is. Poor Noriko. Poor cure speed. Anyways, her design has a lot of black and white checker patterns to symbolize the whole racing theme. Um, you know, the, the finish line, the go flag. Her earrings are like little trophies, um, which I thought would be very stylish and cool. Her collar has kind of like a star ribbon to symbolize like, oh, I'm a winner. And something additional was I gave her skirt kind of a transparent sheer top, just so like the checker pattern is less bold and doesn't clash with other curves. It's going to be kind of muted. I also forgot to mention that I had so much fun designing her hair, very long and blue, so much fun to color. And the end of her ponytail has a little tornado. 
Her attack Speed Slash is a physical attack, just like Jump Dreaming, so that makes two physical attacks in the season instead of just projectiles. She can like slice through enemy hordes, such as like if there was like villains in the series similar to Toy Arcs. And her catchphrase is, full speed with all my heart, cure speed. But yeah, those four are the default members of the team at the beginning of the series and for the first 23 or so episodes because after that, uh oh, plot twist, well not really plot twist, more like cliche plot, the mid-season crew joins in and she is Cure Party who has arrived from the land of games. That's literally the only description I have, I didn't write a full on bio for her, but yes, this is her. Obviously her genre is party games. And her design is almost like a cake. Um, the torso part of her dress is almost like frosting on a cake. It's very understated, so it doesn't look like a full-on like Kira Kira Breaker all mode costume. But yeah, she has very, very long ringlet hair, um, similar to Cure Ace, um, with little buns on top. And of course, the most prominent thing about her are the five balloons behind her, which are attached by a bow. I don't have a full bio for her like the other girls, so I'm just gonna wing it. But basically, like I said in Cure Puzzles bio, she is the princess of the land of games and she was also the cure like the defender of the town so at around episode 23 when the cures are struggling against the villain they're like oh no what's gonna happen like what's going on like i can't like i just can't like we've, we've de-transformed like I, we just can't fight this monster suddenly balloons are rushing towards the enemy and explode and the monster is destroyed they're like what who's that so in a very cure ace fashion they see rainbow confetti start to fall from the sky and the screen shows his platinum blonde hair flowing in the wind and she introduces herself and I actually didn't even come up with a whole catchphrase for her because this was like a last minute one so in the comments if you have a catchphrase for her but she's gonna be like blah 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 cure blah, party and then the episode ends with a dance ending her personality is similar to Cure Ace, like she's a little rude um, and a little conceited, um, but over time she kind of humbles herself after hearing puzzles um, or dealing what she went through. So basically when she returns, um, Cure Puzzle slash Shizu was very like afraid of confrontation because she was the one who jumped in the portal too. And then Cure, um, Cure Puzzle, she has to like explain herself like, but Pudin Sisu, like I'm so sorry, like I just, you know, I just wanted to you know help because like you were like struggling with those like villains over there so i just jumped in and you know like i've always been in your shadow for so long so i wanted to do something and then cure jump cure hero and cure speed are like puzzle didn't do anything wrong like you know she is a queen and you are like rude so they're really defending her and then you know cure party's very on her high horse she's very like very well then well you're gonna have to challenge me to a duel so they they the two of them have to battle it's gonna be the episode be called um I don't know, you know how you know how anime titles have those like two two sentences in one or two sentence fragments in one episode title. So it'd be like a confrontation of something, cure puzzle versus cure party or some stupid thing like that. Well, not stupid. It's kind of trendy and stylish. So um, the two of them, the two of them have to fight, and then cure jump is like, wait guys, like we don't have to fight. And then cure hero is like, let her be, like let them. This is like a, I don't. No, Cure, Cure Hero would be like, let them like duke it out. Like this is like character development for them or something like that. Um, but then obviously they become friends. Like Cure Party develops a high respect for Shizu. And similar to um, Cure Parfait, maybe there can be some character development episodes where, um, you know how Parfait, she was feeling really sad and guilty about how she treated Picario unintentionally. So maybe the same thing can happen for Cure, um, Puzz Cure Party, where she was like, oh my gosh, I was so mean to um, Shizu as a maid. Like, she doesn't deserve this. And she gets, she has a whole like humbling experience. As for her attack, I didn't come up with a name, but she'd probably be able to use her balloons and shoot them like rockets towards the enemies. And just in case you didn't know, she is a white cure. So yeah, that's the full team. Um, the team pose would be unique in that Cure Party's in the middle, but instead she's kind of behind them so she doesn't overtake all the spotlight. So the four of them in the front and she is in the back. Lastly, I forgot to mention that the game controller is their transformation item. I don't have a transformation phrase. If you have one, comment below. Also, there are no final forms in this season, kind of like Doki Doki Precure. Honestly, this is very, the season in general, I was very inspired by Doki Doki, but um, similar to how in Doki Doki, they just get wings for the final attack. In this one, they just get individual giant balloons that are tied behind them. Um, kind of like Cure Party, but each girl only has one giant balloon. Cure Party, she doesn't get any new balloons, she just keeps the five ones behind her. Anyway, that's Play Hard Precure. Tell me your faves down below. I was going to talk about two more characters I made, but the video is now over 15 minutes, so just know that they are green cures. Very green and very trendy. Anyway, those were my Precure OCs. I just thought this would be a fun video for you to get to know my characters. I love creating original Precures and original Magical Girls, and I also love seeing other people's fan series. So if you have any, like, you can literally tag me or DM me on Instagram or Twitter your Precure designs, and I would love to see them and appreciate them, and I will appreciate them even more if they are green cures, but that's not a surprise to anyone. But yes, thanks for watching! Yay!